Oregon bans flavored vaping products. After more than a thousand illnesses are linked to vaping, when Oregon's ban is set to go into effect, and for how long? A powerful show of support. I'm just so touched. After the daughter of Mercy Corps' co-founder shared her heartbreaking story of abuse, how dozens of the charity's workers let her know they have her back. Plus, cross-country Emma's way. A girl's powerful story of overcoming adversity and taking part in the sport she loves. Tonight on KGW News at 6. And we begin with that huge show of support this morning in Portland at the headquarters of Mercy Corps. The support was not aimed at company leaders. Instead, it was for the daughter of the charity's co-founder, Tanya Culver Humphrey. She says her father sexually abused her for years and Mercy Corps did nothing. Well, just yesterday, Mercy Corps CEO resigned amid the scandal. Our Pat Doris was there for the emotional rally. This picture captures the moment that dozens of Mercy Corps workers left their offices to surround Tanya Culver Humphrey with love. I'm overwhelmed. Like, I, I, I really, I'm, really, I'm probably not going to say anything good right now. I'm so, I'm just so touched. Humphrey is the daughter of Ellsworth Culver, a co-founder of the massive nonprofit. This week, the Oregonian newspaper broke the story with Tanya saying her father raped and sodomized her for decades, and that when she finally told Mercy Corps leaders in the 1990s, they left her father in a position of power. She and her husband brought it up again just last year, and again, no action from Mercy Corps leaders. But the paper's story brought a swift response. First, a video town hall Thursday by CEO Neil Kenny Geyer to answer questions about the story. Employees were not impressed. A rebellion followed. There was a powerful moment when everybody just spontaneously went up to the fourth floor, the top floor of the building, and demanded change. They demanded a resignation, and they demanded that there would be accountability. Kenny Geyer resigned late in the afternoon. The senior legal advisor resigned as well. Yes, that was absolutely necessary, and it is just the start, but yes, a very important start. Those who gathered around Humphrey today wanted her to feel their love, to know that they cared, and that they believed her. The people coming that, from Mercy Corps that wanted to do this, they, there was no email or memo that went out. It just, they, they just came out. Many are still furious about the way their organization treated her. There's a lot of emotions um, and a, a demand for accountability and change that we are still following up on and will continue to press for. Tanya Culver Humphrey said Mercy Corps sparked many emotions inside of her over the years including guilt and anger. Today may have added a new feeling. This was uh, overwhelming and healing, and um, I hope it shows survivors out there that you can be believed. Mercy Corps is now looking for a new CEO. I touched base with the company today. They said there are no new developments on that front. Back to you. Oh, what a wonderful show of support. Thank you, Pat. It's official. The governor's call to temporarily ban flavored vaping products has been answered. The new rules go into effect across Oregon on Tuesday. Maggie Vespa joins us now with how this will work. Maggie? Yeah, Laurel, we'll, we'll start with uh, even before Tuesday, essentially, because staff with the Oregon Liquor Control Commission and the Oregon Health Authority are immediately going to start calling and sending letters to stores and dispensaries, letting them know that flavored vaping products are about to be off limits and need to be off their shelves. The overwhelming obligation that this commission has is the fact of public safety. One week after receiving an executive order from Oregon Governor Kate Brown, state officials had a plan. The result, I feel, is a balanced approach to this crisis that will strive to protect human life. Human life threatened and taken by a mysterious lung disease tied to a new and wildly popular vice. Today, the people in this room voted to ban the form of that vice that's most tempting to teens and new users. The sale of flavored vaping products will be illegal statewide 
starting Tuesday. This rule will be Oregon's ban follows Washington's issued just 24 hours prior. The rationale focused on a recent spike in lung illnesses tied to vaping. More than 1,200 people have fallen ill nationwide and 26 have died, including two here in Oregon. This is a very serious issue. You know, it's unbelievable that um, you know, that we have to get to this point, but it's really important that we do. State officials also framed the ban as a step toward protecting Oregon's burgeoning cannabis industry. The CDC still hasn't been able to ID the chemical or product making people sick, but officials recently acknowledged the vast majority of patients vaped with THC. This state's program can and should be a model for the country in the benefits of national legalization. And as such, we also believe that when there is a threat to its viability, we must act quickly and sternly. That doesn't do much to comfort Marcus Nettles. Everything he has on display at Rose City Vapors will soon be illegal. And after five years, he's afraid he'll have to close his business. There is zero uncertainty with what cigarettes are going to do to people this year. They're going to kill almost a half a million people. We know that. It's mind blowing that they're pegging this on youth health or public protection. We have plenty of things out there that are legally able to, that people have access to them legally and will kill more people than vaping. So retailers who violate this six month ban will get a warning and then they could after that be fined up to $500 a day. And if they're a licensed marijuana dispensary, the OLCC could also pull that license. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Maggie. And in tonight's poll, we want to know if you think this ban is necessary. Let us know at KGW.com slash vote. You can also vote on the KGW app. Well, here are some other big stories today. A gas main break and fire injured three people in Seattle today. They've been taken to the hospital. Crews say the fire started as Puget Sound Energy was working to secure a gas line. The three who got hurt are employees of the company. The fire burned for about an hour before crews turned the gas off. They also evacuated nearby buildings as a precaution. Two major sections of Burnside are closing tonight. West Burnside from Hermosa Boulevard to Barnes Road is shutting down at 7 o'clock tonight until 4 Monday morning. Crews will be installing a new pedestrian bridge. And then later tonight at 11, the Burnside Bridge is closing as well, so crews can make repairs to deck joints. It will be closed until 5 Monday morning. And this is great. Check this out. It's a tale of two Nicks. Portland City Commissioner Nick Fish posted this picture on his Facebook page alongside actor Nicolas Cage. Cage has been in Portland shooting a movie called Pig. It's about a man who lives in the woods with his beloved truffle hunting pig that gets kidnapped. Quite a plot, huh? No word when the film is set to be released. I love that picture. <laughs> well, on Fridays, we don't usually get to hear from Orlando Sanchez because he's out sure. busy with Friday night flights, but he came up across a story that is so cool we just had to make room for it. Yeah, it's about a local cross-country athlete who's so inspiring that an opposing team actually reached out to us about her hoping that we would tell her story. So Orlando got to see firsthand how Emma makes the sport all her own. Oh yeah, it's really coming out, isn't it? So wet. I'm getting undercover. It's race day at Y East Middle School. Yeah, I think it was supposed to be Kind of nice today. Maybe. Liquid sunshine soaks the course, but the show must go on. We got to get this place ready. This is our last home meet of the season. Oh, oh, oh. This is it for the girls cross country team. These girls are close, more than 50 on the team. Sixth through eighth grade. This is the funnest time of year for me because all of these girls are um, a family. <laughs> Seventh grader Emma Fletcher is part of the family. I was born with a, a medical condition. It can be hard for her to walk. Yeah. And she's on the cross country team. Emma was born with spina bifida. We were told when she was born, we were told she wouldn't walk. It caused my feet to be crooked. But it hasn't stopped her. I wish we had more girls like Emma. <laughs> she's out there crushing it with the team. A specialized bike allows her arms to do the work instead of her legs. Her being the only one is really unique. <laughs> Grandma is impressed. Uh, I'm very proud of her. I mean, she could have just sat on the sidelines and said, no, I don't want to do this. Feels really good. Emma is making an impact on the team. You know, she's just bringing an inspiration. I think, you know, when she got on the team, you know, Isla, Isla could, you know, vouch to see her shaking her head. Um, she got out here and a lot of the girls are just, they're working that much harder, that much stronger. Nothing ever gets her down. Why? 
The team loves Emma's tenacity. If we're pedaling with our arms, it, I feel like it'd be a lot yeah, harder. So yeah, like, right. I praise her for that. And yeah. Emma knows just how hard her teammates train. I know that the girls have been working really hard since I've joined. You want it? Yeah. yeah. Let's get it. Are they up next? Mm-hmm. It's almost race time. 30 seconds. Okay, I gotta go. <laughs> well, let's try to do our best. Okay? Hunter, set, go! <laughs> Emma starts in the back of the pack, but quickly picks up speed. It's so great that she was able to get a bike and now be able to ride it in something like this. She's doing wonderful. Come on, Emma, you got this. Yeah, she's doing great. Go, go, go. Her go, coach, go, Nick go, Strong, go. is running with her for motivation. This is the last easy part. You got it. Use your back, you got a hill, you got to use this. Use the momentum, let's go. And instruction. Back to one, back to one. Emma never gives up. She's fearless out there. Good job, Eddie. She's like working really hard and stuff and like still encouraging us. She's a part of something now. For a long time, you know, she's kind of felt like maybe she hasn't belonged to something in a group, and now she feels like she's part of this group, which we've turned into a family here at White. She accomplishes whatever she wants to do. You can see the grit on her face when she is pushing through the hard bits. You can see it in her face. Let's go, Emma. Let's go. Let's go, Emma. Let's go. You got this. Let's go. Go, girl, go. Being in the races feels really good for me because it's making me stronger and it's making me feel like I'm more a part of something. Come on, Emma! Push it! Yeah. Go! Yeah, she's fast. Another mile and a half complete. I think she definitely brings the team together and it's very uh, inspirational. Oh, wow. oh, that was so hard. Emma finishes in oh, 28th man. place. Oh, that's the place, best place I've gotten. She's just part of the team. <laughs> We're a family. Oh, that is a wonderful story. Orlando Sanchez reporting. Way to go, Emma. Yeah.